So I'm Belinda Doolin, the Executive Director of the Dispute Resolution Center. Um, what brought me here, um, we're to this junction in, in our services and our work. Uh, my background is dispute resolution, um, so I've been engaged in dispute resolution for a long time. I've been at the center for about 12 years, um, over 12 years now, and about seven, eight years ago when the ACLU published and distributed the school to prison pipeline. Um, it moved me in a lot of different ways. One, um, and I've said this in a, another forum, um, I'm a product of an urban school district and I believe the pipeline is true. I believe that I lived the pipeline. I was, 30 years ago I entered my senior year in high school at Cass Tech um, in Detroit and I remember when the metal detectors were installed in my school and when all of a sudden we went from having positive relationships with teachers to being treated like criminals. Um, <clears throat> and I remember how my class, you know, protested and stood outside on 2nd Avenue saying that we're not going to come to school and have to pass through metal detectors. And like, what does that really mean? What do you think of us? Um, so fast forward all these years later, I read this report, the School to Prison Pipeline, and it just gave me flashbacks about life um, in school and the stories that I had heard between from that point up to the current. And in that report, they reference restorative practices a number of places. And I had heard a little bit about it, had read a little bit about it, um, and started to take a deeper dive at that point. That, OK, if this is something that a respected organization like the ACLU is suggesting might be one way to approach this, then we should take a closer look at it as a community dispute resolution program. And then I start reading about, you know, situations of, of suspension um, and I was amazed. I just, I was so happy that those things didn't exist when I was a kid because I had a bad attitude. I was insubordinate most of the time. So, <laughs> I could, yeah, um, I was an urban kid. That's, if you didn't have attitude, you didn't have nothing, right? <laughs> that was it. Um, so to know that you can be kicked out of school for those kinds of behaviors, for challenging adults, and then the thought as an adult occurred to me, why are we expecting something so different from youth? They are supposed to challenge, right? That's how they learn and grow. And all of a sudden we see that as bad behavior and even a crime, and we're really penalizing kids. We got started in Ypsilanti um, Community Schools, what was just Ypsilanti School District. We started with peer mediation. We had some interesting kids to come through peer mediation, not necessarily because they were the best kids, the honor roll kids who can sit and help their peers problem solve. Some of the kids were the kids that were on the fence. They can go either way. But what was true about all of them is that they were leaders. They had strong personalities, lots of confidence, and they can influence others. So we pulled together a group of kids and we taught them to be peer mediators. That went pretty well. We did it a second year. That went pretty well. And then we parent, uh, partnered with that restorative practices. Um, it's important. They can do it and they can engage in it. We saw youth who were screaming and yelling down the halls, uh, cussing every step of the way. <laughs> saying, I'm going to get you, um, sitting in a circle, being able to really talk about what was bugging them, and to talk about what was happening at home. Mondays were a busy day, by the way, because the weekend, a lot of stuff goes down in the community. They bring it to school on Monday. But they were able to talk about it in a safe way, and then shift. Right before our eyes, we can see it's as if they physically shifted to say, oh, yeah, I'm not thinking about others. I'm not thinking about how this is affecting my mother, my grandmother, my community, my teacher, my friends. Actually, I want them to be my friends. I don't want to make enemies. Um, they make that shift and start to think th deeply about themselves, and then they take the next step and say, what am I going to do to make it right? And they start thinking about it and actually articulating things to make it right. So we started to see that you didn't need to suspend them 